Heidi, hi everyone. Welcome to Colette's Temporary Thermi Kitchen. Tonight I am super thrilled to show you the new cutter that's going to be coming to you very shortly. <laughs> Ching. Very exciting. Drum roll. Um, now, we don't know when it's actually coming exactly. We don't know what the price is or how it's actually going to be sold. So, so what do you know? Not a lot, really. <laughs> um, so, but we will obviously know that very soon. If you're interested in the cutter, make sure you put a comment in the uh, field below. But um, be assured I will be getting a newsletter out to everybody once it's available and I'll tell you exactly how you can get your hands on one of these. Because I think every thermal examiner is going to want one. So how many in Australia? <laughs> Oh, I don't mind. Just just a handful, maybe half a dozen, I think, in Australia. Oh, you told me there was four. So I'm really thrilled to have my hands on one of these at the moment, which is great. So um, what I want to do tonight is just show you um, how super easy this guy is to make and just show you a couple of things that I've made with it today. Now, I've really not played with it very much, so it's a bit of a learning experience for me as well, but hopefully that will show you how easy it is to use. So before we get started, for those that don't know me, my name's Colette Matriga. I am a Thermomix consultant. I'm known as a virtual Thermomix consultant, so I have customers all over Australia. And in fact, Melbourne, go Melbourne, you've actually overtaken my Queensland customers. Come on, Queensland, <laughs> let's get to it. So remember, at the moment, we have got an amazing offer with our Thermomix. If you are looking to upgrade or buy a TM6, seriously, now is the time. You're going to be able to get an extra bulb laden lid and save yourself nearly $350. It's such a great deal. So Ka right. Kai says she's, I've, I've already ordered one. I don't think so. They're not actually even up for pre-order yet, so I'm not sure how you would have done that, unless you're in a different country. I think they might be out in France, but definitely not here in Australia. I've already got one. Oh, you're, well, there's, I think there's only about half a dozen <laughs> in the country, so go you. <laughs> all right, so let's have a look at it. So we all know that the TM6 grates beautifully, and we've been grating in the TM6 for many years. Um, but um, what it does, it grates little, tiny little, um, I guess, balls. And it's perfect when you're doing gratins or um, bechamels, etc., because it's going to melt anyhow, so it doesn't matter. And we've got amazing salads where it actually chops up really finely, almost great like the um, you know beetroot and carrots and stuff like that. Now, for some of us, some of us fussy foodies, we like the little strings, and this is what one of the things is that this is going to be able to, uh, for us to do. Now, what I love about it is Thermomix really do think about everything. Um, now, the first thing I really like is that this is a beautiful compact unit and everything I need to do my, um, my work with the um, slicer, grater, um, is actually in here. And it consists of a number of parts. Now, the first one is the shank. So this basically just goes on to the Thermomix base, so it sits on top of your little, um, the little knob that sticks up on top of the blade. And then we have the main housing unit. So what this means is that this is a beautiful big bowl and this is going to catch all of your pieces. And it just sits on top of the Thermomix and it's easy to take in and out. But of course, because this is catching everything, it means that our beautiful bowl is actually going to be clean. So we're not having to double clean. So well done for thinking about that Thermomix. Now, um, what I absolutely love, Thermomix is so clever. Now, I will confess, I do have a food processor and I do drag that out. It's heavy, it's cumbersome, and I have a whole box of tools to go with it. Now, the times that I drag that out are when I love to do slices, and I have a whole range of mandolins as well. What this is actually going to do is to enable me not to bother with them at all. And with the actual slicer, you have just one blade that does all four things. So it slices and it grates. Now, they have thought about this, so we have two colours. We have the light side and the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few comments here saying, uh, you can now grate your cheese, Andrew. I know. <laughs> He's a little mouse, isn't he? So, um, basically, and there's, there's actually, um, can you see here, Andrew? 
I'm not sure if you can see it. actually on the blade it tells you so this is the um, the actual slicing um, aspect so it's got a little slicer and on the other side there's a little diagram that shows you this is the greatest oh, so you, you can use either side yes. then yes that's why so you so don't need all those ones you've got with your no you know, you know how often I curse when I have to get in the cupboards and drag these things out it's and then you've got like about 20 blade. blades with it no so one blade does all so um, basically what we've got is the gray side as I call it the gray is the gray is to great and then this is all a beautiful kind of slate color cover so I I call this the slate side which is to slice slate to slice gray to great easy to remember and then each of those two different functions you can break down into thick or thin so on the um, the gray for great you can do thick or thin grating and the same on the slicing so let's have a go so what I'm going to do is I am just going to um, start off by um, let's start off by grating something so it's greatest greater slice <laughs> Andrew <laughs> no <laughs> okay I'm just catching you out gray to great I know T -E -G. Okay. S S. <laughs> you remember it however you want to. Andrew will probably never use this, so he will not have to worry. Okay, so let's have a little go. So let's just get a little bit of um, of bits and pieces done. So I've got a, um, a tomato here. So let's just slice that tomato. It's nice. It's soft. So think about fruits and things like that. So S for slice. So we want the slate color going up, and basically that gets attached to the base there. I take off the um, plunger, put it on, and we're ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Let me just check. I have a bit of a pa paranoia now that I'm going to get this wrong. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So greater slice. Great, but greater slice. No, just greater great. Oh yeah, great to great. Just stop it, stop it. Okay, so tomorrow, so we want to make sure that it, they fit in. One of the things I do love, the actual holes, and you have a little look, um, you've got a small one and you've got a tall one. Now fussy people like me will love the ability, let's just shove this in there and let's just put in there some um, carrots, okay? And what we'll do is we will slice these. So I'm turning my Thermomix on, and then I'm going to do this to actually push oh, do down. Both sides. Yeah, I'm going to do both sides. So this is going to stand nice and tall, so it ends up all being even, the same size. It doesn't start falling on its side, um, which is quite nice. Now, the main thing is with this, just like the butterfly, we do not go above speed four, so that's nice and easy for us to remember. And then the other thing is we just need to tell it um, whether we want thick or thin. Now, if we want thin, so I'm going to cut these thin, what I'm going to do is just down here under, can you see, I've just selected the um, speed. I'm going to pop on the reverse. When it goes reverse, it's going to do thin. And I'm just going to go to speed number four, and I'm going to help these go. <laughs> So let's have a little look and see what these are like. Oh, is it, oh the, cl the clamps hold it all in place. The clamps hold it all in place and nice and safe. So just popping this out. And mm. there we go. I have some beautiful, very finely cut carrots. So think about your zucchini slices, you know, your salads. And also, Andrew, don't we love our pizzas in the Havana pizza oven? So this is going to be fantastic for doing all the capsicums and even the pineapple and stuff like that to put on to there. So here I've got a nice mix of the celery and the carrots all sliced down beautifully. I love that. All right. Now all of this can go in the dishwasher. The blade itself can go in the dishwasher, which is great. And I love that. So let's now just have a little go at something soft, which is often a problem for a lot of mixers. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> you have 
to taste everything here, Andrew. Um, is I am going to, they're just beautiful, um, so just to show you how fine these are. And there are so many dishes, they're almost like transparent, so many dishes where you want that fineness because it means things are going to cook so much more quickly. So what I want to do now is I'm going to pop in a tomato and I'm going to take the reverse off and I'm just, oh, I do that quite often actually. Oh, I'll do that again. That goes in, the lid goes on. That's okay, you can edit, edit that out. Can I, thanks Andy. <laughs> so just waiting that down. So that was like hardly any time at all. Actually, this will be interesting. What? Yeah, it's all the yeah. So pop this one in too. So if you sandwiches for lunch boxes and stuff like that. Okay. So that this comes. Let's have a little look. And here you can see we have our really beautifully cut tomato. So that was on a the thicker setting, but that's perfect for your sandwich. That'd be great for a ham sandwich. Just for all sorts. I'm just gonna mm. scoop all this out just for now. But they are just so beautifully sliced. You know, when I cut my tomatoes, they're either about two mil thick or about six mil thick. <laughs> All right, so, and the other thing is pretty easy just to wipe out with a piece of kitchen towel if you want to make it really clean for the next year. But I am not too worried about that. So let's now just move over to um, grating, just to show you the grating function. Great cheese. Yep, just turn that Are you on. having a great cheese? I'm going to grate cheese in a minute. Oh, okay. Because I'm going to, yep. So, but I'm just going to grate this courgette. So, again, exactly the same, but we need to switch it over from grey for grey. So, we're just going to turn that around. That goes on to the shank, nice and easy. So, tell me in the comments, what are you thinking? Is it something that you think that you're, you're going to love? Can you see how easy it is to use? All right. So here we go with that, and now I want what, to What was do... that? Courgette? Yep, so this is now great for grating, and let's just do um, a coarse grate. So coarse grate, I don't need to put it on reverse, but I will go to speed number four, as we, as we know. So here we go. So I was in Woolies today, uh, looking for courgette. She was on her shopping list. <laughs> could, I, could I find a courgette? No. Oh. So, I asked the wonderful staff member there and she says, no, in Australia they're called zucchinis. I didn't grate it, I sliced it. Never mind. <laughs> but anyhow, this hey, will can still I, be can good. Can put it through again? Some lovely, lovely little beautiful What was it supposed to do then? It was going to grate, but we'll grate some cheese and you can see there properly how that is. Oh, that's going to, I think I'm going to bung all these in a bit of a potato bake or something, which will be lovely. All right. Let me just do some cheese. Quickly. Let me just get my head around this. So we've got the top there. The grate is for grate. So if I put that up, that is good. That's the way it needs to go. Okay, that goes on. Now, let's hope this will work. So cheese, um, hooray. Put some cheese in here. So just put some cheddar in, that will be fine. Um, and um, the plunger. Putting Parmesan in there as well? I'm just going to do that one just for now. That will be fine. So let me get this right. I'm, I'm going to look through my hole because that will tell me when I've got the right over on. Yep. All right, so we're going to grate this. Let's do a nice fine grate. So I've got it in reverse and around we go to speed number four. So just so everyone knows, this was loaned, this was loaned to collect. There's only a few in the country. And so she's still working around how to use this thing. I am, definitely. Okay, so that's done. So now let's have a look at the beautiful grated cheese. I managed to do that properly. Can you see there how lovely that is? So can you think how quickly that's going to melt? And it's just going to be absolutely delicious. So let's pop that down there. Right, so I just want to do a couple of other bits here. What I'm going to do is um, to, I've got my carrots, which is chopped. I'm just, yeah, that will be fine. So, what I want to do now is just pop this on, but I want to do it on the other side because I want to go to slicing. Will this fit the TM5? This, um, this will fit the TM5, 
but I understand that the TM6 is going to have a specific mode so you can just press the button and then you can select from there what you want to do that's going to really make it a lot easier to take out the guesswork but it does fit the TM5 as well so um, let's just now we're going to slice these and I want them sliced and um, thin, so I've got it on reverse. So around we go to speed number four. What was in there? So this is potato. Oh yeah. All right. So we do love our potatoes in this house, I'm sure you know that. And one of the things that we love are our potato dupinoise. Can you see how beautifully that is? So your gratins, all that kind of stuff are going to be absolutely amazing. So what I want to quickly show you is something that Andrew and I are particularly fond of. And that is our mini stacked potato dupinoise. Now the main difference between a dupinoise and a gratin, in case you're interested, is that the gratins usually use pre-cooked potatoes, whereas the dupinois use raw potatoes. So what I've got here, and you do this in the Thermomix, I've just had this going earlier, is a mix of butter, all our favorite things, butter, lots of garlic, salt and pepper, and a bit of cream. And then what I'm going to do is, I usually do this in muffin tins, but I've actually got mine in the oven at the moment, so I'm just using my little silver trays. Um, the, the big the, the muffin tins work beautifully um, for using this and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stack up some of these potatoes into a little bit of a tower has anyone made these because they're so good and the Thermomix just makes a lovely easy job of them so once that's done I go about halfway and then what I do is I just pour on just a little bit more of this creamy sauce Okay, and then just wiggle it around. And then on top of that, I put a little bit of cheese. Hooray. Well, a lot of cheese, but Andrew. Hey, you know, you could even just put a little bit of courgette in there too. That would be yummy. No. Okay, too healthy for Andrew. You yep. put a slice of tomato, slice of Tomato would be good. We do, we do different things. But yeah, ham and tomato would be good. No, we'll just, we'll just stick with potatoes tonight. Okay. That's okay. All right, and then we just continue with this layering process, stacking them up really nicely. And then we finish off with um, more cheese. A little bit more. Actually, no, we don't. We finish off with just a little bit more of this. And what we want to make sure is this lovely concoction. So I just press it down a little bit, and I can see it's just there at the sides, which is what I want. So what I then do is I pop that in the oven for about half an hour to 35 minutes at 180 degrees, and that cooks really beautifully. And then um, I take it out and I, go, I put sprinkled cheese on the top and then I um, pop it back in for 10 minutes on high and it is just delicious. So let me just show you some that I made earlier so you can have a little look. Um, but certainly having this um, grater and slicer, it's going to make easy work of these. Just, just want to repeat, there's so many questions here about when will it be available and how much? Yeah. I really don't know. We haven't, as consultants, been told yet. Um, I think in Europe it's about 150 European dollars. They're selling it in France. Euros. In Euros. So I really don't know what they will, will do here. Um, but, you know, it, it is an exciting thing. And, you know, typical Thermomix they have really worked on the development. They've been clever. We haven't got tons of equipment, etc. So they've been really, really good. Here's my little spatula. So these, these are those good. lovely Dufinoir mini stacks, as I call them. I can't find my, my favourite little spatula here. Let me just grab a little point. We're, we're in semi-mayhem here because we've oh. packed just up most of the stuff. As we This Friday we collect the keys to our new place. Very exciting as you can imagine. So let me just show you, this is, now normally I would do them a bit higher, um, but this is what they look like. And I've got to tell you, they're just, they're just delicious. So in there we've got all those little layers of potatoes, cheese, and all the other goodness that we need. And... Well, you, can you can post a, re post a recipe for these? Yeah, I 
can post a recipe. Just let me know if you want a recipe. They're pretty straightforward. Yeah, someone's asked. Okay. So I'm just going to wish this through. And I must confess, I did forget to put the cream in this batch here. So, but... Oh, come on. I might have probably left them in the oven. Just I did, a little I did bit say from, I did can, shout can from you, the couch. I know, I was just busy. Can you just see all those lovely potato layers and just how beautiful they're cooked? And they're, I know they're going to be so delicious, but very, very hot. So, and you can have that because I know you have cheese. Does it need, to, it need to be hot. seasoned? No, no, it's good. Okay. Um, lots of cheesiness in there. So, um, that's just a little introduction to the fabulous slicer and grater. Once you get your head round, um, the um, grating and shredding, it's super easy to actually use. They are fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Know, they're really, really cool. And, um, you know, there's going to be so much, it's going to be a whole new world of opportunities open to, up to us. And when they say the TM6 just keeps get, getting better and better, they really mean that. You know, they're now looking at the sizing option, which will be coming to us soon, where you can call up a recipe that serves six and resize it to serve just two. How fabulous is that? And of course, all of that is happening with the TM6. So if you're thinking about grading or wanting one of these beautiful things in your kitchen, it's a great time to get one. It is really the one appliance that you need in your kitchen. Forget about all the others. And I'm thrilled I do not have to drag out all those other contraptions from my cupboard, all those other discs. Um, this one little guy on my bench is going to do it all. So there you go. Any other questions, Andrew? Uh, look, you lots know, and lots of yeah. through afterwards and, and, and read those out for you. Um, okay, everybody have a beautiful evening. We're going to carry on packing and having fun here in the kitchen and doing whatever else needs to be done. And um, I will look forward to catching up with you real soon. My name is Colette Matriga, Thermomix Consultant Australia Wide. Give me a call if I can help. Bye for now. Say bye, Andrew. Bye, Andrew. Oh, I'm going to eat some of this. My mouth is actually watering. <laughs> so yummy. Look at that, it's, it's so delicious. I think it needs a little bit of salt. Do you? Yep. Oh. oh, it's so good. Do you think it needs some salt? Yeah. I was in a rush when I made you them. Don't, you know. don't need to eat these for anything, they're just by themselves, they're just oh. fabulous. Eh? That's so good. So, so good. I'm going to devour this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.